Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. Now today I'm gonna to show you a couple of keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop that will speed up your workflow. Hopefully you'll pick up something new and we'll get to it right after this. So I was making a Patreon video on editing in Photoshop and I was gonna show the top 10 shortcuts that I use the most for my Patreon audience. And I thought, you know what, let me give a little teaser out to YouTube. So I decided to take five of those tips and share them with you. The first couple are pretty easy and most people already know those, but hopefully you'll see one or two in here that you, uh, that you don't recognize. Before we get into Photoshop though, I do wanna show you just a basic setup. Uh, I'm gonna show you, I'll bring in a, uh, there we go. I'll bring this in and I'm gonna show you my hand position. I use a, a tablet up here at the top. I use this for detailed work. The beauty of the tablet is it's got a pen that is pressure sensitive. So unlike a mouse that is basically just on or off when you click the button, that pen can actually give you sensitivity in the um, hardness of your brush. And it's really good for detailed work. All, almost all illustrators use a pen and not a mouse to do their um, illustrations. But in Photoshop, you may wanna play around with it. It's not easy to get used to, but once you get used to it, it's pretty good. Now, on the other side, I've got just a wireless mouse with a scroll wheel. I do like a scroll wheel on my mouse, so you Mac users are in, in tough shape there already. And then I always position my thumb on the Alt key and I just rest it here. That gives me really easy access to the left side of the keyboard. And my goal is to try to keep my finger and hand on the mouse at all times. I will occasionally leave it, but most of the time I stay right here on the mouse. So most of the shortcuts I'm gonna show you are actually gonna be with the mouse in my left hand without using my right hand to come over to the keyboard. There are a couple in there that I, I will uh, have to do that for. Okay, let's jump over to Photoshop. I'm going to bring up the, so now you're looking at my hands in, in real time as I'm showing you these shortcuts. Now the first one is actually pretty straightforward. Um, it's just literally these four buttons in the bottom left. And that is Control Z, Control X, Control C, and Control V. Now, most people already know that this is the shortcuts for undo, cut, paste, I'm sorry, cut, copy, Control C, copy, and Control V, paste. Most people know that, but if you don't, I'm, I'm always amazed at how many people I run into outside of photography that don't realize that those are universal. In other words, they work in word processors, they work in spreadsheets, they work in email. So just about any computer program uses those same set of universal functions. And one of the best ones for me, because you know frequently I'll make a mistake here and there, I'm gonna just paint a random uh, brush on here. And I wanna change that because I've made a mistake. I'm just gonna hit real quick Control Z and it's gone. And if I make two or three mistakes in a row and I wanna go back four or five steps, I can just quickly Control Z until they're all gone and I'm back to where I started. So Control Z, I use very, very regularly. Um, and these other uh, editing functions I use all the time. So if you're not using those, for some reason, if you're not using those, make sure you start getting used to those shortcuts. They will save you more time in your life than any other shortcut on the keyboard. All right, now the next one I wanted to show you was um, just the ability to, to use these icons in your layers menu. So if you are working in layers, and if you're not in layers, if you're not utilizing layers and masks in Photoshop, you're making a critical mistake because it is the number one feature of Photoshop. It is basically why Photoshop exists because you have the ability to have all of these layers and masks that you can make adjustments to. So first thing I'm gonna do is just duplicate a layer. And you can, a couple ways to do this, you can right click and duplicate, or you can go up here to the menu and duplicate. But the easiest way I've found is just to drag it down here to the plus sign. Now, these icons all have functions when you drag your layers to them. So if I want to get rid of a layer, I can just drag it to the trash can and get rid of it. Again, most of the stuff you can also do with right click or somewhere else in the menu. But when you get used to dragging down to these layers, it becomes quite easy. So if I've got a few layers here and I select two of them and I wanted to group them, I could then drag them down to this folder icon and now they are grouped. So some very easy shortcuts down there and one quick way to utilize your layers is to drag them to those icons and utilize the function there. There's also a mask layer here. And if you are using masks, which I do all of the time, it's very, very helpful to know that that icon is there and it's a quick way to add a mask. Not everybody uses those drag down shortcuts, but I've gotten in the habit of using them, so I thought I would share them. Now the next tip involves the paintbrush tool. I'm gonna to show you two keys that you should use all the time when you're dealing with the paintbrush. Let me just explain the paintbrush real quickly. The top layer over, look above my head, you'll see on the left-hand side. 
is, is these are swatches, so they're colors. And the top color is called the foreground, and the back colors and the underneath color is called the background. Your foreground is the brush. So whatever color that foreground is, that top layer, that's what's gonna be your brush. So when I click on the brush here, and I'm just gonna draw a line, you'll see that it's white. And right here, there's a little set of arrows, and that set of arrows flips the colors white to black. And now I've got black on the top, and I can use black. I could also, you notice I'm hitting the Control v Z key every time I undo. I could also select a swatch or a different color anywhere up in here, and that would be my new brush color. So there it is, and I'm gonna undo that. Now my brush color, you'll notice, is set to green. Primarily with, especially when we use masks, we're only worried about two primary colors, solid black and solid white. And anytime you hit the D button, you're gonna see that it defaults back to black and white. If the color you want is not there, I showed you that you can hit this little icon, but why bother when the Z, or I'm sorry, the X button does the same thing? So I hit the X and you'll see those swatches just get reversed back and forth. Now, where does that come in handy? It comes in handy when you're using masks. And again, masks are one of the most important concepts to learn in Photoshop. And right now I'm gonna show you I'm gonna hit D to make sure I'm on the default colors, white and black, and then I'm gonna to toggle back and forth. And when I'm on my mask in black, it's gonna hide, and then I can quickly go back to my mask in white and reveal. Now, this isn't a tutorial on masks, but a lot of times when I'm editing, I'm gonna to need to refine masks at a very detailed level. So I'm gonna be going with black and white and black and white and you could see if you watch my left hand you'll see me just toggling black and white back and forth all the time and that's very very helpful to quickly refine masks when you're using them so my third tip is to understand the brush tool d defaults to black and white solid black solid white and then that x button will toggle those colors back and forth anytime you're on the brush tool now the next tip i have is just about size of the image a lot of times you want to do a couple of different sizes and there's presets right on the keyboard to get you to those sizes. The first one is going to be to get the whole image on the screen. So you're going to hit, again, I kind of rest my hands here. This is one of the few times I will leave with my right hand. I go to the control key with my thumb and I hit zero. Zero will always, with the control button, will always bring it back to fit the entire image on the screen. Now you notice I got my Photoshop window a little shorter for this video so I can show my keyboard down at the bottom. But anytime I hit that button, it's gonna reformat and resize it to the exact size that it will all show in the Photoshop window. Here's another one. So it's one and zero. Control one is 100% zoom. And this is really a quick shortcut to get to that because when you're looking at detail, a lot of the time what we care about is what does it look like at 100%. Control one gets you right there. Control zero gets you right out. So that's the fourth, and I'm gonna tie it into the fifth because there's another zoom function that I use a lot, and I noticed a lot of people don't use it in their editing video. I've watched thousands of editing videos over the last eight years, and not a lot of people use this. I never really understood why, but a lot of there are a lot of Mac users. So for PC users, one huge shortcut, and it's the one I use a lot. I'm gonna get this control one, now I'm at 100%. But let's say I want to zoom in a little bit or zoom out a little bit. Watch my thumb on the Alt key and watch the mouse wheel. So I hit the Alt key and I can zoom in and I go down and I zoom out. I do this all the time. It's actually the preferred way that I zoom in and out. And yes, there are keyboard shortcuts that will do this for you. There are other ways to use the plus and minus symbol. So for example, I can do Control plus and Control minus to make it bigger but now I'm leaving the mouse because these buttons are too far apart. So to stay on the mouse, I can just use the control button. I'm sorry. I can use the alt button, the alt button and zoom in and zoom out. So very, very, very helpful. In fact, if you're not using this and you've got a PC and you're using a, you have a scroll mouse, I would say really, really try this. I don't think you'll ever go away from it. So that's the alt and scroll function to zoom. All right, last one for the free YouTube video. And again, I'll have a few more over there on Patreon. But my last one is really, 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 in my favorite one that you're gonna see is changing brush size quickly. Now there's a lot of, again, there's a lot of ways to do things in Photoshop. I very rarely see people use this technique. 
Uh, and again, there's a lot of Mac users out there. So if you're a PC user, uh, I don't know if that makes a difference, but this one is about changing brush size. So you could see the brush size right here. See how quickly I'm changing this brush size? And it's a real simple trick and it's a, it takes a little while to get used to it first, but it's the Alt key. And it's one of the reasons I keep my finger on the Alt key. I do this change more than anything else I do in any edit is to change the brush size. It's what I do the most. Yes, there are other ways to do it. I'm hitting the bracket keys now. So you'll see my right hand on the brackets and that's making the brush larger and smaller. There are other ways to do it as well. I can scroll up here and look at the top left and that's my brush size. So I can change the brush size there, but look how cumbersome this is. If I'm dialing in and trying to get the right size, it doesn't make any sense to me. Alt key, right click, go left and right. And it's that easy, left and right. Just drag it till you get to the size you want, drag it down to, to the left to get smaller and drag to the right. Now here's the other thing, the same set of functions controls hardness, but it's up and down. So if I hit the Alt key again, you're gonna see it bring up. I'm gonna hit the right click, and now I'm gonna go down and up. And that brings me from 100% hardness when I'm going down up to 0%. A lot of my brush and masking comes in at 0% hardness, but there are times I want a more of an edge so I can bring, and you can stop anywhere in between. So look how simple that is. And it's amazing how many new Photoshop users don't know that that even exists. So looking for quick shortcuts, that's one of my favorites. Take a look at that one and see if you can work it into your workflow. Now, I'm gonna take a break here from YouTube and I'm gonna continue with my top four on Patreon. Hope you enjoyed this part of the video. I'll be back in just a second. So there's a few shortcuts to get you started. Hopefully you found one in there that you hadn't been using before and give it a try. It does just require a little bit of muscle memory to get used to them. And again, this is the kind of stuff I do on the other site. So check out my subscription site. I'll put the information down below. Uh, leave a comment. Maybe you've got a favorite shortcut that you use. I don't know them all. I know a lot of them, but there are so many shortcuts in Photoshop. And honestly, you don't need to learn every one, but you are gonna find a set of 10 or 20 or 30 shortcuts that are very, very helpful in your workflow. And the more you continue to use Photoshop, the easier it becomes. And you'll get to the point where you're making adjustments and you're really not even thinking about it anymore. It really is just muscle memory and it becomes very, very quick and it speeds up your workflow. And nobody wants to be sitting at the computer for hours editing videos, we want to be, or editing images, we want to be out in the field creating them. So these shortcuts will speed up your process at the computer and hopefully get you more time out in the field. Thanks for your continued support on the channel. Leave some comments down below, and I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.